Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video as we talk about a very new remote ID module from Spectrum called Sky ID. Let's get to it. In this video, I'd like to give you a quick update on a new remote ID module by the folks at Spectrum called Sky ID. Now, I do not have this module. I've not seen it. I don't have any technical specifications on weight or power consumption. All I have is a press announcement from the folks at Spectrum on it, but I think this is an important thing. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about it and just kind of um, make some uh, observations and what might may be future steps ahead. Just as a very quick update, the FAA has published its final ruling on remote ID. This is being filmed on August 4th, 2023. There's nothing any RC modeler, drone pilot, fixed wing helicopter has to do to comply with the remote ID until the ruling comes into effect on September 16th, 2023. On September 16th, which is just about six weeks away from this uh, video filming, everything changes and we have to comply with remote ID. What that means is there are three ways to comply with remote ID. If you have purchased a drone since December 22nd, 2022, that is remote ID compliant. All drones being sold today are remote ID compliant. <clears throat> if your AMA field or educational institute for recreational flyers has a FRIA or an FAA recognized identification area, you can fly with no equipment whatsoever and be compliant with remote ID. The one piece missing from that puzzle was a remote ID module that would take the electronics of a remote ID, not built in the factory, not needed by a FRIA, but you could just plug it into your model and, and comply with the remote ID through this module. There were some out there. They were two to $300, fairly big, heavy. They were built for European specifications. They just weren't in any way suitable at a price point or size for the US market. But now with Spectrum announcing their Sky ID re remote module, that's going to change a lot of things. So let's go over some of the information on the Sky ID. Again, I don't have it. I've not seen it. This is just an initial um, announcement of the Sky ID. So this will be a partnership of both Spectrum and Horizon Hobby, two pretty reputable big companies re are announcing the Sky ID remote identification module. This is what we've been looking for. It'll be available closer to the remote ID compliance date of September 16th, 2023. So they're working full speed. It's just not ready, but the, the Spectrum is fully aware the due date is September 16th. Sky ID will be under $100, $100 and provides GPS features through Spectrum telemetry, but the Sky ID module is also compatible with non-Spectrum radio systems and as a standalone device. So they go on to say they're committed, the customers have all the information they need um, as we get close to September 16th. They'll be providing further educational materials and introductory pricing on Sky ID. Uh, so that, that's where we stand. So what is important about that is <clears throat> with the remote ID ruling, a lot of modelers are very upset about it, but it's falling into place. Again, this is being filmed on August 4th, 2023. The huge focus of the whole effort is on drones and that has been captured pretty well by requiring drone manufacturers to build remote id into their systems there's not a drone company out there that wants to be shut down by the uh, commerce department for not being compliant with that so remote id is happening in the largest sector which is drones in terms of frias the faa recognized identification area they are being authorized Again, it is, you don't need a free until September 16th when the rule becomes effective, but they are being issued. The one missing piece was the remote ID module. Now, if you fly to part 107 of um, uh, commercial drone operations, you need a, a remote ID module for each aircraft drone that you fly. If you're a recreational flyer, you, the one remote ID module can be switched between your various recreational aircraft. The reason I'm pretty excited about this Spectrum Sky ID system is Spectrum is truly a leader with radio control electronics. Um, we all fly 2.4 gigahertz radios today where you can bind your transmitter with multiple receivers and fly a variety of models with one transmitter. Um, I use the Spectrum DX6. 
I'm not getting paid any money by Spectrum. I'm not sponsored by them. I'm just a very satisfied user of Spectrum. But it's important for perhaps the younger viewers here, there was a time when there was not the 2.4 gigahertz radios. And what happened was before 2.4 gigahertz came in, each radio had a specific frequency it was on. It couldn't do some magic frequency hopping. They were the 72 megahertz uh, spectrum. Whatever exact frequency you're on, they gave it a number just because it was easy to say channel 44, channel um, 38, whatever, instead of 72.048. And so what would happen is if your radio was channel 34 and somebody else was on channel 34 and you both turned on your transmitters at the same time, they would jam whatever model had a receiver on channel 34. So they had to be very strict rules at every field where you'd impound the transmitters, get a frequency flag. You had a, a frequency pin board at the field. And if channel 34 was being used, you just couldn't even turn on your transmitter until you had the pin for channel 38. All that changed in 2004. It was Spectrum that introduced the first, that introduced the first 2.4 gigahertz radio systems. And again, a lot of the chatter today about remote ID not going to work was the way with that 2.4 gigahertz when it came in. It can't work. It'll deconflict. They'll jam each other. And I remember one demonstration. They actually, they actually had a hundred models working at the same time with various uh, 2.4 gigahertz systems just to prove to everybody that this is okay. So Spectrum is a leader on these technologies. They introduced 2.4 gigahertz. They've come out with innovations after innovations, smart battery technology and so forth. So I'm very interested and excited to see how this Sky ID, a remote ID module actually comes out. One quick reminder on remote ID, remote ID modules and so forth at AMA sanctioned events. The way the FAA works with the remote ID ruling, everything is geared towards licensed pilots. So for drone operators, that's under Part 107. Now, I have my Part 107 license here. It is an FAA license, um, so I can fly commercially if I wish to do it, YouTube videos and so forth. However, the FAA realizes a lot of people are going to be flying recreationally. They will not have a license. And so what happens is... The FAA has a publication called Advisory Circulars. And Advisory Circulars are kind of an easy way to explain in greater detail what the FAA is trying to do with the regulations. So Advisory Circular uh, 9157 provides a carve out for recreational flyers from the uh, licensing requirements of remote ID. And it goes with a bunch of things on airspace. But what I wanted to point, basically don't fly in controlled airspace unless you have clearance from the appropriate ATC authorities. But they do talk about CBO or community-based organization sanctioned events. In our case, CBO is the Academy of Model Aeronautics. A sanctioned event is an AMA contest of some sort, wherever it may be. And the FAA says sanctioned events, also called sponsored events, are generally of short duration, take place at an existing fixed site or temporary fixed site established specifically for the event. And it says... Um, CBO operations and events occurring below 400 feet AGL and uh, in Class G airspace do not require FAA review, approval, or authorization. CBOs, i.e. the AMA, intending to conduct events in Class G airspace that may exceed 400 feet must contact the FAA for further information. So this is a good carve out. If the AMA has any sanctioned events, you do not need any remote ID module because you're essentially we're going to establish a temporary FRIA for that event, and you can fly at that time. Thank you for watching this video. The um, Spectrum Sky ID remote ID module is an exciting development. Still a lot more to learn about this, but it looks like Spectrum is doing, continues to do work on this. This will be the final piece for the remote ID uh, portion of compliance and more information as we get it from Spectrum on this development with the remote ID uh, process. Thank you.